U.S. Army Field Band Federal Brass providing the musical backdrop for this year's holiday tree lighting. Hello and welcome to MeTV's Year in Review 2021. I'm Brian Spann. As always, this time of year we take a look back at the year that was through the MeTV lens. Much like last year, the pandemic has had a tremendous effect on the news and events we're able to cover, but it was a year full of highlights, including a return of 4th of July fireworks, Kimbrough's 60th anniversary, and of course a story that kicked off in January and dominated much of the year, COVID-19 vaccinations. Last week, the first doses were administered to fire and emergency services personnel from Fort Meade and the NSA campus. We are hoping in the first two to three weeks to be able to get through the phase 1A category. Fort Meade welcomed 37 sailors into the Chief Petty Officer ranks this week. More on that in just a moment. Last week, USO centers around the world, including Fort Meade's, celebrated their 80th birthday. Elsewhere, a Fort Meade legend, Lieutenant Colonel Alfred Shehab, was laid in his final resting place this week at Arlington National Cemetery. Colonel Shehab passed away December 12th last year at the age of 101. A fixture at the annual massing of the colors, it was just a tiny part of his involvement and service to Fort Meade and the surrounding community. Major General Omar Jones, the commander of Joint Force Headquarters National Capital Region and the U.S. Army Military District of Washington and Fort Meade Senior Commander, is in the final weeks of his tenure as he transitions into his new assignment as Deputy Commanding General of Installation Management Command. The 2021 Youth Volunteer of the Year is Ariana Braley, a thrift shop volunteer. The Volunteer Family of the Year is the Potts Family, nominated by the Fort Meade Spouses Club. The Organization of the Year is the Fort Meade Spouses Club. Mavie Connor, nominated by the Post Thrift Shop, is the Civilian Volunteer of the Year after contributing more than 3,500 hours in the past year. And finally, Master Sergeant Nicholas Potts from Air Force Cybercom is the Active Duty Volunteer of the Year. He was nominated by the Fort Meade Spouses Club. All told, there were nearly 3,500 volunteers on Fort Meade this year, which translates into more than $580,000 in services. Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland and military working dog Marco filming a virtual first pitch, which will be shown at the Baltimore Orioles game on May 15th, Armed Forces Day. Brood X is uh, one subset of a you know, species of periodical cicadas. Uh, it is 17 year cicada. So this right. year on Armed Forces Day, May 15th, the Fort Meade USO and the Orioles put on a contactless drive and go event at the Smallwood Hall parking lot. The Orioles organization actually reached out to our Fort Meade PAO office um, and we have some experience doing this before so Fort Meade PAO reached out to us, uh, brought us all into the same conversation and we were able to create this wonderful uh, drive and go event today for our uh, service members and their families. Today we're taking a moment to say farewell to two longtime public affairs professionals and staff members. Larry Whitley, who was drafted in 1971, eventually ended his active duty career as the chief enlisted soldier in Army Public Affairs. Mary Doyle has served our country for more than 30 years as an Army Reservist and civilian. She's also a published author with more than a dozen books, including a series of mystery novels to her credit. Forgotten Country. Oh. Scenes from Argonne Hills as the Post Chapel celebrates the 246th anniversary of the Army Chaplain Corps. The Corps was established on July 29, 1775. All right, so we're going to go ahead and unveil what we are affectionately calling the commemorative stone, a.k.a. the oh, edifice. Wow. <laughs> Happy 60th anniversary and congratulations to the entire Kimbrough staff. In other news, each November, German and Italian military attaches from Washington, D.C. join with Fort Meade to remember the 33 German and two Italian prisoners of war interred in the Post Cemetery. Four, three, two, one. Flip that switch. Oh. Yeah. And that's the MeTV Year in Review for 2021. One final note, we do have one more show before the end of the year. On December 17th, we'll be talking about the extensive housing inspection coming up and much, much more. Meanwhile, I'm Brian Spen. For everyone at MeTV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great holiday season and, of course, a great mead week.